face off by a roll of the dice. They'll fight dirty, leave nothing behind but fingerprints and a tall tail. Stealing hearts, breaking farts, with plenty of time to kill. And I see. Hey there, a and Deviants, Junior Adventures, and friends. Welcome to the next episodes of Authors and Dragons Presents The Dicey Bastards. I'm Gibby, M.K. Gibson, your host, Dungeon Master, and author of such books as the Shadow Master series and the Technomancer series. Who do I have with me today? Well, we have a full cast that is completely wide awake and alert, aren't we, gang? Let's start with Robert Bevan. Bob, how you doing? I'm completely alert and wide awake. Uh, hello, friends. Robert Bevan here, author of the Caverns and Creatures series of comedy fantasy novels and short stories. In this game, I play the role of Chaucer the Sorcerer, the Sorcerer, with the Morcerer. That's all I got to me. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Drew Hayes, coming in low, but coming in hot. How you doing, sir? I'm tired and ready to rock. Uh, I am Drew Hayes, author of books such as... Superpowered NPCs, Fred the Vampire Accountant, Five Minute Sherlock, and my newest series, Rover Powered, which is available in ebook, audio, and print right now. Oh, and I play uh, Kaber, the horse guy. Did I miss Mr. Walter? Yes, I did, because I just see him and Robert Bevan think the same person. Rick, sorry about that. How you doing, bud? I'm apparently more weak than you, since uh, I still remember that G comes before H, but... <laughs> I explained myself. <laughs> just go with it. Mm-hmm. Likely story. All right, anyway, my name is Rick Walteri, and I play Moog Face Eater. In real life, I write several things, including the Tome of Bill, the High Moon series, and Tales of the Crypto Hunter. And my latest time chaser is just about done, hopefully soon. Ms. Kaplan, how are you? Hi, it's Emily. I write books under E.M. Kaplan, like the Josie Tucker mystery series, and I play Claudia, the rogue, but also... Thanks to sporadic insomnia, I had three hours of sleep last night. So I am also primed to make some terrible decisions. I was at a convention this past weekend. Someone came by the table space because I was sharing with uh, Fall Staff Books. So I was like, I'm looking for like a cozy murder mystery kind of thing. And I turned to John and said, I forgot to bring copies. I, I pointed them in your direction. Awesome. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. I'm looking out for my friends. Speaking of looking out for my friends, Mr. Steve Weatherill, it is late there in uh, jolly old England. How you doing, sir? I'm doing okay, Gibby. I can see out both ways. Hi there. I'm Steve <laughs> Weatherill, and I'll be playing Stan Dandeliver, uh, a man currently looking once again at an unconscious Jorcerer. It's a, it's a weird job, but somebody's got to do it. In real life, I write books. Uh, I, I trust your Google skills, listener. I'm not going to patronize you. Find out trust, for yourself. Trust your Google skills. All right, before we get in the game, take a quick, quick, quick moment to remind everybody listening that if you're not part of the AD family, then you're missing the frick out. Head over to patreon.com slash authors and dragons. Check out the various tiers and perks where you can join for just five bucks a month. Be part of our Discord, hang out with hundreds of friends, talk to us authors, and have a great old time. Head over to authorsanddragons.com and check out our merch links to T Public for some cool stuff. If you don't have any cash, don't worry about it. Just go to your podcast services, YouTube, whatever you do to hear or consume us. Hit the like, hit the subscribe, hit all the buttons that all the kids tell you to do just help us out it, it means more than you know and sh of course share with all your friends now if you're not part of the a and d family you're missing out on all that sweet a and d incest <laughs> I'm gonna say, if you're not part of the a and d family you're part of the problem <laughs> Ooh, that's good oh someone, someone took a note of that that's good we're keeping that all right, with the shilling out of the way, let's get into it <clears throat> blah, 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 blah. greetings all this is connie stands conscious how are you Fans, friends, I, I really need to ask you something. Come on, lean into the mic here. Lean in. Why? Why do you like these idiots? It's clear that the guys, Dice Gods, hate them. In the last episode, Stan, Claudia, and Moog put on a grand display of ineptitude as they spent most of the time climbing in, out, or falling into large piles of poo. And our beloved Jorsworth played keep away with one of the slowest monsters in the goddamn manual and lost. 
But somehow, they managed to escape the Cinder Grove and discover the ruins of East Cherry. A short rest later had them back in tip-top shape, just to discover a hole in the ground. A few fingering, fingering the hole jokes later, the dicey bastards made up their mind to climb down into that hole. With an, a display of athletic prowess on par with Stephen Hawking's facing a flight of stairs, the majority succumbed to gravity and fell down the hole. Once again, Jorcer was knocked the fuck out and is on death's door. And that's where we pick up. But wait, what happened to our lost druid? Let's check in with him first. All right, uh, Kaber the Expedient, who kind of wandered off in the middle of the last battle. Do me a favor, give me give me three nature rolls. Nature or survival, which, pick one that you feel more confident with, nature or survival. Oh, survival uh, by by a country mile on that one, because I have a zero for nature. <laughs> yeah, not quite a country mile, is it? You know it, what, Drew? give me two survivals in one nature. I want to see what happens. <laughs> oh, I should have kept my mouth shut. First survival is a 23. Good, very, uh, very good. Second survival is a respectable 10. <laughs> That's average. Okay, give me one nature. And nature is a 17. Holy shit. All right. I know where to put you on the map. Fantastic. Let so after getting lost and negotiating a settlement between uh, two warring squirrel crime families, uh, Kaber kind of meanders back into what he considers his side job. Okay. Kaber, you managed to wander <laughs> through the forest. Uh, your friends are missing, but thanks to survival roles, you avoided danger. And well, friends is a strong word. Uh, <laughs> the people you are contracted to uh, ob <laughs> obligations and contractions to follow these people around and keep them out of trouble. All right, so, so yeah. th thanks to the nature and survival roles, you picked up their tracks and you followed and you followed them into what appears to be the ruins of East Cherry. That's a, it's a city that's much like West Cherry, but it's been burned down and it's shitty. And now this is an old, overgrown. Um, town center where you're at on the map uh ahead of you uh Kaber is what looks like an old well with a uh several corpses of uh well all types of uh skeletons and dead things uh a big tree growing up out of it it's freaky as shit the night has descended uh and every so often you hear giggles of children nearby creepy uh as give me a quick perception check uh Kaber gets a nine well it's slightly below average so you're, you, there is something ahead of you. Like you, there's all you see is the rope. There's a rope tied to a tree. That's as far as you get. Hmm. <laughs> Boy, this this really feels like someone else's problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pulling up my wild shape options real quick. Now remember, you are now. See if you can transform it to someone who gives a shit. <laughs> now, see, the, the team did get a short rest during their last game, so technically you would have had, had time as well. If that helps you at all, please take a sh uh, give yourself the, all the benefits of a short rest. Uh, you know what? I believe that can be helpful for druids. I, uh, I was actually okay on wild shapes, but uh, I do get them back at short rest, so good to know. Um, all right. Well, seeing as there is very clearly some creepy shit going on... Mm -hmm. Uh, and I have been separated from the fleshy meat tanks who are uh, supposed to. You have followed their trails. That, that's what the, the, the that's one of the the, the uh, nature checks are for. You, you yeah, it's actually, not as so. Yeah, you actually may be able to smell us at this point. <laughs> Just a trail of <laughs> shitty footprints. Weirdly enough, that's kind of where I was heading. Uh, I'm trying to see which of my forms have uh a a sense of smell well you also like have a, a sense scent. of sight and there's like there's literally shit caked footprints leading this direction it wasn't that hard to follow <laughs> because those people spent so much time in and out of the compost piles of like shambling mound shit turning into tur something with a better sense of smell might be detrimental <laughs> might actually be detrimental <laughs> <laughs> detrimental. <laughs> you will take constitution saving throws <laughs> wisdom saves <laughs> all right um well I'm I'm gonna go with what I consider to be uh, an underrated classic because you know it might only be a CR one half, but uh, it can rip the face and genitals off a human being. So I'm gonna go ape. <laughs> okay, let me see if I find it. Like that that really puts shit in perspective. Like challenge one half <laughs> for a creature that could rip our fucking arms off. Uh, yeah, I can't. I can never see a monkey now without. You know, that's the first thing I think of. It's really <laughs> ruined apes for me. Oh yeah. All right, so, you are so in control you of that. Eat? You are control of that monkey. On the on the ape thing, has anybody watched Chimp Crazy? Ooh, natural twenty. Fantastic. 
So I've heard great things about it. Based on the timing <laughs> wise, there is a rope attached to this tree that was <laughs> tied off by actually someone competent, goes down into that hole, you and you both smell more poop from that hole, and you hear uh, what sounds like idiots falling on top of each other, and someone going, Jorcero, no, no, no. Man, am I glad I picked something with a climb speed. Yeah, because I was going to let you fall on Jorcero and let him get the dead. So. <laughs> well, That's how the rest uh, of us got there. <laughs> Did you imagine a centaur trying to lower itself on a fucking rope? I wanted to see that. I was going to make the difficulty so hard because it's all upper body strength, baby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, he has no upper body strength. That horse would have been It would have been anvil. two failed death saves on Jorcero had you land on him. So. Uh, all right, good, good choice with the ape. Uh, while... While my ape begins to climb down the hole okay. uh, using his climb speed, uh, I will uh, mention that, yeah, Chimp Crazy is a like a semi-documentary. I think it's on Max. Um, they go into like some famous chimp stories like Travis, the guy or the chimp who like uh, ripped that woman's face off. Oh, yeah. And uh, wonderful. But it's also, I think, the story of, again, I've gotten this second hand. So my understanding is it's about uh, a lady who, like, worked at, like, a chimp study place, and then they got shut down, and then she just took one of the chimps that she'd bonded with and uh, lit out of there. Oh, I think I've seen some documentary footage of what happened. Uh, prob probably just as important. Do we realize this is Kaber, or do we think this a killer? You have no clue. <laughs> so I was about to ask. That's what I was. Once but the monkey, once the monkey talk had done this. Okay, so <laughs> Moog, you are laying flat on your back. Uh, Jorcer, give me a death saving throw. Real It'd be great if, hey. if every time Kaber changed into an animal, he still had that hat on. Yeah. <laughs> that would be beneficial. Uh, just uh, roll me a d. Just roll me a d twenty. If we get okay. an enchanted item option, that might be a fun choice. I get to keep the hat and vest every time. <laughs> Maybe I can make you one. <laughs> that roll? I might nope. take you up on that. <laughs> What'd you get? I don't know. I'm, oh, here it goes. Oh, fuck. What was it? Natural one. Two, def two failed death saves. Okay, the rest of your party, uh, with what little moonlight's coming down from that hole and a little bit of the ambient uh, light from down in this cave, Jorcerer... <gasps> is looking as grim as fuck. I will, um... I have Healing Word. Okay. I'm gonna use... It. Yeah, I'm gonna use Healing Word on Jorcera. Okay. Did you just and, notice he was dead? dead well, you know, you've got to give people a chance to pull themselves up by their bootlaces, Emma. <laughs> I did, Spell and he failed just miserably. refresh at sunrise. That's what my Healing Word's <laughs> gotta be, actually. He's just gonna smack Jorcera in the face on a couple of times. They're gonna... Come on, Jorcer. You Could need to start pulling your own weight. <laughs> All right, so give me a give me a roll. So much, so many, so many hit points. Jorcer gets back. Yeah, it's a D four, I believe. So <laughs> three. All right, Jorcer, you are conscious. <laughs> slap, slap, points. slap. I, I like to imagine like Jorcer just letting out a death rattle, and that draws Stan's attention, and the healing word is "oh shit." <laughs> Oh, and Jorcer did, if I remember correctly, he did uh, uh, put on a moo moo. He took time running from the. Oh, uh, yeah, I meant to, to ask, what, on... what outfit did we land on? <laughs> Literally. What, it was moo moo. Well, what design does the moo moo have? Well, probably shit. <laughs> Is it floral print? <laughs> oh, yeah, because they all have a print. I got you. All right. Well, yeah, I'm imagining it's it like a turquoise with like yellow flowers on it. Oh, yeah. So, like, like a Marge Simpson's curtains kind of thing. Now we're talking. All right. Oh, now that I'm awake, I'm going to pull my weight. Okay. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> I think I'm going to get up and move out of the way. But as soon as you said pull, you should have seen it coming. All right, I'll, I'll <laughs> dun, be surprised dun. to stand the two of you up. I assume, Moog, you'd like to stand back up as well? Yep. All right. So you are down in this cave, and I told you last time, there is noise that sounds like uh, something like children's laughter to the uh, <laughs> northeast and to the southeast, um, different sounds. Might be a slight snoring sound. So, Before we make a decision, Stan will say reasonably, Ah, a monkey! <laughs> <laughs> well, yes, now that you look up, I was going to give everybody a chance to do a perception check, there is a monkey climbing down the hole. Everybody, stay very still. I've heard some <laughs> really, really horrible things. Stan will cover his genitals. <laughs> About... Uh, monkeys. Not a, not as cute and hilarious as you'd initially think. He's not even wearing an amusing hat. 
Everybody be very calm. We're, we're going to check his spells, see if, we, if, if he has anything that can shock the monkey. Uh. <laughs> I don't know if y'all have uh, like seen the uh, images that D&D uses on their uh, site, but like... The ape they have for the monster ape looks like an ape who's coming to steal some fucking genitals and faces. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going gonna... I'm gonna, I'm gonna to put it in the group chat. I don't think it'll show up on the uh, on the stream for folks, which actually is probably good because it's probably copyrighted. Yeah. <laughs> uh. Oh, no. OK, that didn't work. I'll put it in the slack. In case my innuendo before wasn't clear, I also have my hands on my genitals. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it turns out to be pretty prescient, dude. Good okay, instincts. there we go. Tell me that guy's not coming for your fucking face. Oh, damn. That guy looks yeah. like the cover of a Tarzan novel. <laughs> I've been looking at the new D&D art, and everybody in it looks like a total wimp. Why does this ape look so badass? <laughs> Orc Warrior looks like she's about to serve me a latte, but this ape. <laughs> Listen, the new D the new D and D people are never going to leave their their uh, their version of their fantasy Starbucks to even go fight this monkey. So I'm not even worried about it. Let this the, monkey the now rules. He's going to sling. He owns be the like forest. Nuclear powered. <laughs> oh, oh, he, he's just going to sling other people's faces. That's his ammunition. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well. You guys see a, 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 a how adorable are you, uh, Kabir? Are you that? Uh, are you adorable? Or are you scary as shit? Gibby, we've made our feelings on monkeys pretty clear. <laughs> well, then, you know what, guys? There's a creature coming for you. Do something about it. We're gonna back off. Is it not making any? Is it being threatening? It, it's anymore? coming down the rope at you, and it looks like uh, the picture how, that Drew just far, sent us. How far away is it? It's it, you guys fell forty feet. He started climbing down, so he's at least thirty feet away and coming at you. All right, Ray, Ray Frost, give me an attack roll. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> Don't antagonize the monkey. Does a fourteen hit you, Drew? Uh, in, in a form, form, yes, yes, it does. All right, so you take seven cold damage. And oh, just... Hell. <laughs> All right, are they under me? Yeah, directly. Yeah, at least at least Stan and Claudia are. I'm about to get a face full of ape. If, if, you, uh, if you fling poo, we're already covered with poo, so yeah. we oh. wouldn't even <laughs> notice. We have a natural. I'm, poo I'm going to. I'm going to uh, let go, drop into them, uh -huh. and then after I have taken the fall damage in my wild shape form, I'm going to shift back to horse. Sounds. Now you can calculate how that impacts them. How Not you? Not a like. problem. So okay. So you're going thirty feet. So three d six on you. Uh, so that would be 3d6. That is 12 damage to you. I'm going to give it half to them because they break your fall. So both Stan and Claudia take six That's damage. That's perfect. I... That knocks me out of wild shape. So <laughs> to uh... waste an action. Gibby, explain to me what I'm looking up at right now. So, okay. For listeners at home, <laughs> Stan's like, he he's he's sitting there, looks over Claudia. She's like, I don't know what the fuck's going on. Draws her hand on cock as usual. Moog says, I'm enough of this shit. Points of finger, glowing a beam of blue light shoots up the rope, freezes the monkey. Monkey then lets go of the rope. Stan, you look up and see monkey badonkadonk -donk coming down on your face. It's got no pants and its balls are out. And it lands on you and Emily simultaneously, knocking you both prone. Uh, you both take six points of bludgeoning damage. Six points of monkey damage. Take six points of monkey damage. That seems and then, so excessive. And then the monkey form disappears. And now there's a horseman standing over you. Drew, you can decide which direction your penis is facing. Is it Claudia or Stan? So do I see do I see the monkey testicles morph into horse testicles like some bad AI video? Uh, yeah, it kind of, actually that kind of is what happens. So they hit you in the the you dark side of anamorphs. <laughs> Shall yeah. I put myself down for some psychological damage there or what? If that's you know what, I love the role play, so you go with it, buddy. Claudia grew up Claudia grew up in a circus. She's horrified, but she's she's okay. I'll give okay. myself whatever the opposite of inspiration is. <laughs> Depression. <laughs> yeah. Move, move, uh, move will say, aren't we, we're not going to worry about it. I mean, like, the, the difference between a monkey dick and a horse dick is <laughs> phenomenal. Yes, yeah. so you're lucky to keep both eyes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you are now standing over top of both of them. So, like I said, you can be pointing towards Stan. You can be point. You know, you can be north or south. Your call. But like both, uh, both, both the people on the ground are getting an eyeful of a uh, Kaber. Kaber will brush off his vest, adjust his hat, straighten his tie, and say, "In the future, if you see a random solo animal that does not fit the environment, let's just 
maybe give me a chance to wave. You, you, that advice is 100% going to get us killed. <laughs> I will I will clop my hooves once and then slowly step away from uh, Stan and Claude, <laughs> feeling my point has been made. Fair enough. I don't know. I think that was a fantastic entrance. I mean, sorry about that, old boy. I thought you were a monkey, and to be fair, you were. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got separated from you all, and the woods can be dangerous. That's, that's why I don't like spending too long in them. Next time, party leader, don't order us to attack. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I distinctly remember saying, cover your genitals. Now, in Jorcer's world, that might seem like an attack option, but you're right. Actually, you're entirely correct. I should have... Uh... We're, we're, I will say, translate Stan badly had the work. exact right reaction upon seeing an ape. <laughs> Those things are monsters. Considering my audience, you're right, I should have tempered my language there. Yeah, I hope we've all learned some lessons today and we're growing as a group. All right. So- I know I am. Oh, no. I feel like next time I get into a fight in the ape form, I have to go for genitals and faces <laughs> now. <laughs> So give me, you know, that's that's for warning. Figure out what you want me to roll for those. All right. Well, now, now that we're all alive and friends again, let's go kill some kids. All right. So you guys are standing in a very, very, very large uh, underground cavernous uh, area. Uh, there seems to be this bioluminescent lichen uh, lightening the place up. There are what appears to be like the downed uh, animal remains of very large animals that have been stripped to the bone. Uh, there seems to be a, uh, a small freshwater pond uh, in the in the very center. There's a passage to you, like I said, to your northeast. And now we heard. I will remind the crew. Uh, remember, guys, healthy children, healthy payday. Let's try and keep a child murder as our plan, not profitable. Um, now, somebody out there is snoring. I would say let's be stealthy. That hasn't worked out for us. So let's walk normally towards that sound. You want to go to the snoring sound? Well, I'm just putting this to the group. Okay, okay to the Unless group. Unless anyone has a better idea. May as well. We're down here already. Oh, Moog okay with that. If we find sleeping thing and stab that. Well, let's see where the situation takes us. We might not right. have to stab anything. So you Who guys knows? are walking normally, and you guys are going to the southeast, correct? Yes. Yeah. All right. So you're moving this direction around the fresh water around. Yes. Okay. All right, I realize the centaur is probably not the most stealthy of animals. No, regardless. it's clip clop, clip clop, clip clop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, I got a, I got a plus two in stealth. <laughs> he's, a, he's a horse, but he's wearing slippers. <laughs> I've, I've got better stealth than I do nature. <laughs> Gabar's like he's a pretty well turned out dude. He might have some pretty decent footwear for a horse. Like yeah. spats. <laughs> oh, 100%. Nice. Yes. Absolutely. That's canon now. <laughs> Absolutely. Fan art community, you heard it. <laughs> As you guys come around the corner of this uh, the, the stone passageway, it leads up and it appears to be a sheer rock wall with about a 12 foot uh, rise and a plateau above you, what appears to be a living area in there. So you, it's a little hard to see from your angle. I mean, obviously, you can see on the map, but. Uh, you have about, like I said, about a 12-foot sheer wall. There's some crags, there's some holds, but a uh, little fancy parkouring. You might be able to work your way around some of the rock formations, but uh, if they want to get up there, give me uh, figure out how you're going to get up there. Damn, if only we had an ape. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how, far, how high up is this rock formation? Uh, approximately 12 feet. Now, here's the thing. Uh... This one right here, that's a five-foot section over there. This is about an eight-foot section over here, and this very lip is about 12 foot. Okay, so we can... Um, it was sensible out of this. We could probably use... Uh, it's, a, it's badly phrased, Drew. Don't take offense. Use Kaber as a stepping stone onto the eight-foot. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we'd effectively be mounting a horse and then you're just kind of stepping up, you know? But... Yeah, pretty much. I mean, or the, you get, this is, like I said, this is about five foot. He's tall and it's 12. So, yeah, it's at seven feet there. That'd be more of a... Your fingertips would just get the, to the cover if you stood okay. on his back. So, you uh, I, I don't get have bear my up rope, eight feet. But does anybody else have a rope available? We sort of forgot his rope. Yeah, yeah well, then, let's not talk about that. <laughs> I, I don't have a rope, but I have two working hips. I could try to climb instead of uh, stand. 
Uh, give me, uh, give me an acrobatics. Well, look at you roll. with your working hips. <laughs> give me, give me an acrobatics roll to parkour your way up there. All right. No whammies. Let's go. Ugh. Wow. A 10. A 10. Well, you got up to, to this five foot section pretty easy. That's it. I, uh, uh I'm going to go ahead and, uh, just misty step to the top here. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah, that's and what then... I was thinking. I will take the uh, 50 feet of rope I have out of my uh, bag and then start looking for a place to tie it off. What? Stan, who was about to use Kabera as a stepping stone, just falls flat on his face. <laughs> once again, goddamn misty step. All right, yeah. Kabera, once you're at the top of the, once you're at the top of this large area, there seems to be a table of food set out, three beds of various sizes, a treasure chest to the southwest, or excuse me, the southeast, a potions table, a a table with all kinds of instruments, a sh- table with a shitload of those masks you've seen kids a magical symbol in the center and one of those hottest fuck ovens that you guys saw before that was in sleepy jeans uh uh in that you guys stayed in so oh and a mountain of and a literal mountain of cocaine there is what appears to be because if that if you are a five foot creature that is five ten fifty twenty feet of cocaine nice Hmm. okay only we had some sort of statue inspiration (laughs) It's not- Save it for the metaverse, A and D. Anything nearby that looks like a good spot to tie a rope to? Well, there are, are some very large tables. There's a very large bed. There are, I mean, look around. There's a, the very hot oven that looks to be cemented on the wall. The the very large bed over to this section over here seems to be, um, uh, well, 5, 10, 15, 20, about 25 feet tall. So it is heavy as fuck. Uh, okay, but it is also too far. There we go. Okay, the table should work. The table, it's a very large table as well, so. All right, uh, I will uh, tie the rope to the table. Uh, Is that a sleight of hand or survival? I would like a sleight of hand roll to see how well you tie that knot. 21. I roll a 21. Well done. Nicely done. It's Mm -hmm. better than Stan's natural one in the last episode. Well, he's just (laughs) 20 times better. (laughs) Uh and that 21 times thank you uh <laughs> we'll uh uh run the rope just down here it's 50 feet of rope so even with the distance it has to cover yes, you are uh, going the extra 12 down yep. should be fine all right moogle, moogle climb up first give me an athletics this is roll. literally what kaber is for <laughs> an utility roll. baby G- give me an athletics roll with your one hand 12 uh it takes you a little while and it's not graceful because of the one-handedness but you get up there yeah, I'll, I'll follow okay. up, too. Okay. Uh, since there's a roll yep. involved, I'm just misty-stepping. I don't blame you. <laughs> yeah, I've got, uh, of... I've got three hit points. Did you say this is 12 foot? Yes. Gibby, I'm like, I'm not a, an in-shape man at all, but even I can cr- climb fucking 12 foot with a rope. All right, well, give me an athletics <laughs> roll. Give me an athletics roll to climb with the rope. Well, the point, the point I'm saying is maybe we skip the athletics roll <laughs> for these seasoned adventurers. Seasoned adventurers. Se- seasoned you've seen with far, You've seen too many yeah, seasons, Mr. Yeah, no yeah. Hips. So, like, <laughs> hip you're, replacement you're granny. you a lot of cred that we haven't necessarily earned. <laughs> you haven't earned a 17. Well done, sir. Well, that, that's, that was that's me. Never that mind. was me. <laughs> well done, you, <laughs> you oh. spry thing. Oh my God. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm going to roll a... Uh... You wanted an athletic specifically, I do want athletics. did you? Yes, I did. I don't need an usually good roll. There. 16, so. look at you. Got up there. Didn't even take your game wow. a little bit of day. No echinacea. Fantastic. You After over a century of being a rogue in a fantasy uh, world and facing all kinds of tyrants, I can do something that a middle-aged <laughs> fat man from the real world can do. <laughs> Hooray. You know, we're going to test that theory. The next AD con, we're going to put a 12-foot thing and give you a rope. <laughs> Just say, get over it. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to miss you, step. <laughs> yeah, that's what you did. Okay, so you are at the top there. And this what appears to be, like I said, a, a large living area. There is a sh- like there's a lot of food laid out. It's very nice. Uh, magical circle of some kind down here. Tables with potions. Tables with little magical artifacts. Tables with a lot of those masks you've seen the kids wearing. And a treasure chest in the southeast. And food that's still on the grill over here. Is that grill running hot? Uh, it is. I'm gonna rub some cocaine on a steak and uh, cook it up. All right, so go, all right, so there's a big amount of cocaine right here. Just like Tolkien would have written 
<laughs> I don't. I don't know how I didn't see that coming, but I didn't see that coming. Slice of fantasy beef. <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I feel like cocaine on a steak is some more George R. R. Martin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah. All right, we're in a real um, Goldilocks situation here, and because Man, I learned this video is so demonetized. <laughs> Because I learned nothing from that story at all, Stan will say, okay, everybody, uh, let's rogue up. Fill your boots. <laughs> I think that means steal stuff. So I'm in. Wait, what the hell? <laughs> uh, the bed, she'd sit back and this, uh, uh, what's... <laughs> Ooh, that man, Anyone... good thing I picked the table. <laughs> Is it, does anybody... Okay, so uh, all the fey base people, uh, that would be Kaber, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm like 90% sure. Yeah, yeah so give me yeah. an arcana roll with advantage due to be, you being a fey. Or having a, a fey ancestry. Yeah, I'm I'm double checking. Or history, your sure. call. <laughs> so. Yes, creature type, you are fey. Okay, sorry, what was the roll? Uh, either arcana or history, whatever you feel more comfortable with. Both uh, are intelligence, so... This is not a fey uh, ancestry. Arcana it is. Fey. Oh, nat 20! Nat 20. Sir, you are staring at what's known as an anus hag. Um, they are renowned for um, stealing ugly. children, uh, doing all types of like dark dark witch of the woods type of thing. Uh, and Game Gam sits up and looks at you. Stan will say, somebody's been sleeping in their own bed. You know, you know give me all the credit in the world. For not going for the obvious anus hag joke. <laughs> yes, I, I I tried not to, but I'm glad someone did. Uh, Gam Gam gets Why out of you? bed. All right, are you going to sit down or are you just going to stand there? Uh, this is probably the person who's corrupting the children. She's an anus hag, dark deeds, magic, etc. Before we before we do anything hasty, let let us give her a chance to perhaps bribe us to look other way. Oh, that's exactly what I'm doing, dearie. Here, please have a seat. There's food on the table. My sisters will be along shortly. Well, uh, sorry to get you out of bed, but are you the one who's been corrupting the children into child soldiers, which will inevitably I, I, die I, when they I, I face a uh, more like, sophisticated force? Come over here. Have a seat. Have a seat. Oh. You know, we can either fight or we can eat. Your call. Well, Moog will go and hop on a seat. Moog wants to hear both. the offer. Uh, I'm I'm going to cast an offensive spell here in a moment. I'm just looking up a few things. Okay. No, uh, I need you sure. guys to. I need uh, you guys to to have this conversation for eight hours, <laughs> and I'm going to eat and take a break. Uh, no. <laughs> so, did you, are you still getting the cocaine from over here and putting it on the steak? Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, go uh, for yeah, it. Yeah, she invited us. <laughs> yeah, she did. You know, she, and she doesn't yeah. stop you at all. I would highly recommend not eating the food at a dark magic user's table. You, you, you're not possible. Uh, and she sees you and she says, Derry, I am too tired to give a shit about that right now. I, I mean you at this moment, until you bring me harm, I mean you no harm. Well, we only really yeah. have your word We're, for that. I'm not, I'm not in the Fey realm right now. I'm independent. Mooks. Right, well, you know, while uh, while the steak's cooking, uh, I guess I'll take that that hatchet and chop up some potatoes. <laughs> yeah, they're right there. Go so go for it. There's also yeah. it looks like the, the pork Mook chops down offers, there. Offers this. We should listen to Hag, because some of some of children are no doubt elves, <clears throat> and Hag greater is well higher on food chain than elf. I can't help thinking, Moog, that your decision making has been somewhat influenced by your innate prejudice. Uh, there's a flash of light, um, and the portal, and another hag shows up. Uh, Gaber, yep. you recognize this as a night hag, one that infiltrates dreams. Night and hag! Now we have a night hag, one who infiltrates dreams. Again, the more of these who gather, the stronger they'll be. I'm going to go ahead and summon my hawk spirit. It's not an offensive gesture, but yep. it's just a little guardian spirit guy. And then uh -huh. uh, a third one comes in, and it is what you known as a green hag. Also, basically, they're all hags of all types. They all have various powers off in the fey realm. And the green hag looks at Stan and goes, hey, baby, are we still going to roll the roll in the hay later? I know you like me. Do you know her, Stan? Uh, Claudia, I've had an adventurous life and a failing memory. I may have known you for all I know. <laughs> Claudia, give me a give me a history roll. Oh, jeez, she knows 
squat. Okay, here we go. I'm, oh. I'm going to stand behind the murder bear girl. <laughs> she sounds a she sounds a shitload like Pink Rita. Oh, Pink Rita. No wonder if there's a pile of co- cocaine here. Ah, uh, yes. And then the other one goes over here. She's like, and who her voice sounds remarkably like Sleepy James starts working on the grill and standing next to George so starts cooking. Do you need anything help here, dear? Because I can I can work this grill. Whatever. What do you What do you need there, Mister Jorcer? What do you need? I think I'm doing all right. I, oh, I'll flip the steak. Well, it's my grill, so I'm just saying. You know. Okay. Oh, did you well, uh, Did you put the seasoning on? What kind of marinade? Okay, you yes. Okay. Well, that, yeah. Besides that, but did you add the? Oh my God, marinade. And she starts sprinkling some herbs and seasoning on there. How rude. So the three hags sit uh, down. I'm not arguing. Yeah, no, and they, you know, they invite you all to sit around the table and have a meal. Okay, so so these bitches seem really cool. Are we sure that they're bad? Maybe it's the kids who are evil. Oh no, they're ours. Uh, the the Anna's hags. No, like, I mean the Gam. original kids. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Gam Gam raises her hand. She's like, so that. Let me guess. You guys are adventurers, and you got some call about something attacking the town with the children, correct? Yeah, more or less. Well, yes, well, children attacking people. Um, child soldiers, yes. Well, no, they're child labor, okay? Who do you think picks all the cherries in the cherry grove? Back when we used to run East Cherry, my sisters and I, we came from the Feywild. We formed this town. We had mm, the, everything yeah. going. Then a bunch of adventurers come in to try to stop us, so we faked the uh, we faked the whole curse thing. Uh, the children do work for us, yes, and they go a little bit crazy whenever the adults are acting up. Then when the entire operation set started burning, was going down, we burned down the East Cherry. We moved to West Cherry. Uh, okay, I'm hearing child labor, but with yes. knives, so child soldier. Also, you burnt down a fucking town. No, but no you one t- died in the town, dearie. Because the mayor, uh, me, I'm the mayor of the town, just moved operations over here. How else do you think we sell magic items and cocaine to the, and distribute it to the rest of this place? Children make excellent uh, mules. Uh, they are excellent workers. <laughs> You're speaking in a very reasonable term, but all I'm hearing is arson, child drug okay. trafficking, and child soldiers. Uh, so I will say this, Drew, you you being the fey person knows that these three ladies at this table would obliterate you all. So he makes an excellent mule. Yeah, that was why I was raring to go when there was one. Now that there's three, you've noticed I have uh, edged toward the running away. Oh, yeah, away. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw you. It's, it's, it's fair, but like, Moog's sitting there. Uh, Sand, are you sitting at the table with him? Ah, uh, Gibby, what do you want me to do here? It's child, your call, baby. Yeah, uh, child soldiers, child drug trafficking, burning down a town. Well, here's the thing, Gary. Um, You all could fight us. You will lose. Or you just go back to the, the adventuring guild and say that the thing is dealt with. The children, not all the children are under control. Here's, and this is the truth. The ones who are more uppity, unruly, we have them wear the masks. It puts them. It makes them a little more controllable. Yes, we do sell the the the. the so the ones with behavioral problems, you give them combative magical advantages. They protect the town from outsiders, dear. Why are you use using children? To, you're a powerful magic user. Why are you because, using child soldiers? Because maybe they're lazy. Mobs, oh, oh, they also didn't understand. protect Czech You don't understand the ways of the Fae, clearly. <laughs> I, oh, I understand the ways of the Fae. Normally, Fae and lost children, not a great combination. They're not lost. Mook have, have, they're pretty no lost. Children Some of them here, are but, fucking dead. Yeah, I say, yeah, and whose fault is that, Mr. <laughs> Mr. Mr. Stan, I believe your name is? Oh, I'm sorry. Are you trying to uh, do a moral 180 on me? They tried oh, to did... kill us. They oh, are I'm dead sorry. now. Uh, who, who Why sniped, did they try to kill us? Who sniped children from 100 yards who away? Who armed children <laughs> to go against seasoned who, adventurers? Who, 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 who will point out to, to, to fancy, <laughs> fancy, no longer half, half elf. If, if you recall, we, we come here not out of goodness of heart, but because coin purse is light. If oh, uh, nice hags no. make coin purses less, high, less light, Mook, that's the problem. Mook, I'm going to have to disagree with you here on a Let's fundamental go back to the adventuring moral guild. Level. Just go back to the adventuring guild, say the problem is dealt with. and uh, Or you just walk, regardless. Okay, uh, one of you, whoever, uh, you, the, 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 you look like an elf, but you don't talk like one. Elf, go, go uh, over uh, to uh, that uh, chest. Uh, what, what did you call Mook? No, no. You look like one, but I know oh, you're not. No. Oh, no. What is my steak doing? I, all I want is a cocaine steak before oh, I you do. Your, how, do you, how do you like your cocaine steak? Medium rare or well? You better uh, chew fast, uh, buddy. If, if it's yeah. at all cooked, I'm going to start chowing yeah, down. Yeah, you're good. You're good to Luke go. Luke is hands right. on site for one thing and one thing only. <laughs> 
finally. No, I'm willing to break Ru- Luke's racism might I'm work in our moral favor. I'm willing to let you walk out of here with over 2,000 gold, several magic items, and you can go on your merry way. Sure. Uh, if you can just include that deal to all the children you've brainwashed into murderers that we can return to their family, we'll be on our way. Wait, wait, what kind of magic? The family helps. Who do you think gives us the kids? The, you you think the adults aren't in on this? Oh, well, you know, I'm not a big fan of slavery either, so <laughs> fuck them. Um, we'll take they, the kids. They send the kid. All, every every adult in West Cherry used to be a kid in East Cherry who used to pick, and we all move on. It's part of the thing. It's a rite of passage. Once they reach a certain age, they're no longer kids to us, and they become the adults of the town, and their kids then move. They, they pick the cherries. We sell the cherries to, at a reasonable rates. We, we bring in old potions. We turn it into cocaine. We manufacture all types of magic items to supply the area. We're actually a very viable thing. We This isn't like the old days of the Fey Realm where you eat food and make you dance and do a crazy thing. No, we are entrepreneurs, mm. aren't we, sisters? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yes. Mo- and we all start Mo- nodding. Mo- point out that their operations seem much better than run-down <laughs> brothel in shitty town. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a, it's a fine business model. You can do that when you don't have to pay your staff. Guys, I don't, I don't have a moral compass. Can you tell me if we're supposed to knock Stan unconscious? <laughs> we'll get back to you on that. <laughs> All right. So we have. I said. Let me see. I actually. I'll give you. I'll even tell you what's in the. I'll even tell you what we can do. I have two thousand six hundred gold, a plus one axe, a flying carpet, a bag of holding, and three magic clothing items. See, we actually tailor as well. We're trying to expand our business with experimental clothing magic. Uh, all you need to do is go out and wear it around and give us, give us like you know, your be a beta tester for us for these for these um, items. And uh, yeah, each me and my sisters, we love to make magic items and sell them at a profit. You know, the children, like, no children gets hurt in our town except for people like you. And once they reach, once they reach 16, they become just adults of the town. And then the next kids come along. You you know what? Go check. Why were all. they raiding the town the other night? Uh, hey, uh, give me, ki- I'm going to cast Longstrider on myself. Go for it, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to go here, you know what? You know what you can do? You can go, okay, go out to the main section, go back to the to the north. You'll hear all, the kids are just having a party in there. The kids are have free will. Now, sometimes- Yeah, unsupervised they, kids will get up to some sometimes shit. Sometimes they have, they get a little rambunctious and, and run into the town. No one really gets hurt. And they do a little vandalism, hooliganism. It, it happens there. We're, we're fine tuning. See, the masks, she points to the masks over here. We're fine tuning the process, you know. Mook understand. Mook was once orc child. Mook committed orc child atrocities. <clears throat> yes, Moog was horribly abused as a child. <laughs> Some like, might say right, so that you're, hasn't so worked so out for his development. Would you, as she starts speaking to you in Orcish, uh, pardon me, sir, would you, like, I see that you are, you claim to be an Orca, that is fantastic. Would you like to be an Orc again? Actually, as a matter of fact, I uh, I would. And uh, if anybody who who does speak uh, Orc, you notice Moog gets a whole hell of a lot more eloquent. <laughs> uh, I speak everything. So, I mean, it, it would be a little more of a difficult process. We would have to, like, so how did you end up in this particular form? Well, uh, uh, I'm going to lean forward to Claudia. I think Moog is uh, about to be on the hag side very quickly. Oh, wow. Okay, so either we have to knock Stan unconscious or I need to go blow up the stove. Listen, um, as an aberrant mind sorcerer, I have telepathic speech. I would what like to fuck? send a message. <laughs> 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 it's Mr. Step from the Mind. Don't worry about it, Stan. It's very confusing. Holy shit. It's one of my I'm just fucking with Stan at this point. <laughs> All right. I, I just want to tell Stan telepathically. We take him up on their offer. We arm ourselves with some gold and magic item shit. And we come back for him later. <sighs> I was. Uh, I'm, I'm going to kind of whisper to Claudia. I think getting out safely and considering our options might be. The Anybody most wants to go check move. on the children, they're perfectly fine. You, you are more welcome. Just go out to the main section. Go to the northeast. They have a big party in there. The kids are great. They are protected. They are well fed. I'd like to message Stan. Also, this cocaine steak is amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, so... Uh, Telepathically, uh, Stan's mouth will start to water. <laughs> Sleepy Jane comes over next to you, Jorcer, and asks if she can try some of that steak. Because she hasn't really rubbed the, done a cocaine rub in a while, so... Really? The, uh, the raw ingredients were right there all this time. Well, yeah. I mean, it's like, but it's like, well, it's like, huh, I've never really... And then she starts tearing into, like, she get two thumbs up from the night hag, um... She's like, by the way, sorry about those dreams, honey. You know, the the whole uh, you being chased by time and your father, all that stuff. My my mistake, you know. 
Because you reckon when was you I were, having dreams? Yeah, yeah, there was the one episode where uh, you guys stayed at Sleepy Jane's Inn and you had you failed your sa- role. Had a dream where you told us about a horrible nightmare where your father is chasing you with time and a, an hourglass, and you saw this creature in your dreams. And that's why you need the cocaine and, stick. And and pump and kumquats, yes. <laughs> Bear, do you want to go look at the kids? She goes over to the like, pink Rita comes over. <laughs> pink you. Rita, who is now in her green hag form, goes over, gets a like a scoop full of cocaine. <sighs> oh yeah, that's the stuff. Okay, whoo. All right. So okay. So here, she walks over to the chest and she brings out. She pulls out three items. Uh, who would like to try these on? We have the safety pants, the flash pants, and the boots of walking all over you. I will uh, go check on the children and make sure they're safe. Claudia will go with Kaber too. Okay. Yeah. I'm, gonna, uh, I'm gonna wild shape into ape form uh, to uh, climb what on down. Like, who kind of like boots of walking all over you? I, like them. I could probably do with some safety pants. <laughs> all right. So, uh, for for Moog, if you would like the boots of walking all over you, go to the items manager and your D and D Beyond, and just type in boots of walking all over you. There should be a homebrewed item right there that you can check out. Same thing with Jorcer. Just type go to the home go to the items manager. Type in safety pants. Oh, you said flash pants or safety pants? I said safety pants. Okay, now I'm going to do the. Um, it's the safety pants. I'm going. I'm, I'm glad I'm not all of the, Oh, the these are bad right immediately. <laughs> and uh, the second in the chat in the chat menu, um, the second one there, Jorcer in the Zencaster chat, you will see a link there for the safety pants. And yes, it, it's exactly what you you guys are singing. <laughs> well, you can pants if you want to, <laughs> but you're going to have to leave your friends behind. Because your friends are going to check on the welfare of some kidnapped children. There is something in the item description to that effect, yes. All right, so you two want to go check on the children, correct? Yes. I'm going to grab you two. That is what we're saying. <clears throat> oh, wait, do you guys want, do you literally want to walk that direction? I'll put you on that map. We want to walk out of this room, yes. Yeah, I'm going to be with them, but I am going to be open about it. I'm going to say to the hag, okay, if these children aren't being ex- exploited for horrible reasons, then we'll, uh, as you say, we'll go... We'll go check okay, on them. I will put you guys. I'm, so you guys are just leaving this area. You're not actually going checking on the children. Okay. Well, we're we're leaving the area for right now. I think we're probably going to talk once we're out of the. Okay. Room. I'm gonna for the sake of this thing, you guys are off this map because I, I have the two okay. party things going on. So the boots of walking all over you and the safety pants. Now there's still the flash pants. If anyone wants to try the flash pants. Uh no, I'm being vaguely mission oriented. <laughs> Okay. I, I I feel like I just know enough fey shit as a uh, centaur not to take items from hags. And Claudia's been cursed enough times to feel like something is going on. <laughs> She's got a Mook sense is, for it at this point. cursed to be elf. <laughs> it can't get much worse. Yeah, well, Stan's got a little bit of can, history with his fix, cursed weapon. We can fix that, Mr. Mook. I think we I think we could do that if you want. Uh, it might take some time, though. Um, so if you guys are no longer in earshot... Uh, so she's going to talk to Mr. Moot now. Uh, do you, if you guys are willing to uh, forego a fight and just leave and let the adventuring guild know that things things are taken care of in in uh, in West Cherry, that you guys here can go on your merry way. We'll give you the two thousand six hundred gold, a plus one X, uh, and a one small flying carpet and a bag of holding. We'll throw in all this to you. Just walk away because with your friends not here, we will crush you. Ooh. Moog, Moog were oddly enough wearing boots of walking, so Moog okay with that. <laughs> all right, now I will ask one more favor for all this. Uh, one of you is going to have to take one of these masks. You don't have to wear it, but you have to attune to it. And um, I want you're going to have to have create a bond with me. So you're you're test marketing our products. So we're gonna have to create a bond so we can like be in touch. Okay. From the other room, Claudia says mask. <laughs> there's a whole, there's a whole, there's a whole table. Of those child masks. So, hmm. oh. the, you want sticky, sticky wizard, or should Moog take? Uh, you, I'll take both if you want. It doesn't matter to me. Well, do uh, other than attuning, what do masks do? Uh, well, okay. So now, for the legalese of this, for the for the players, if you if you take the mask, one of you or whatever, your next level up, you have to level up in warlock. You have to t- you have to multi class into warlock with a, a a fey patron as the as the build. Hmm. I see. If I, I'm not sure if that'll will that give me any additional powers. 
Uh, well, you you will get access to actually a lot because once if you level up enough, there's a lot of cool warlock things, new spells. You will be able to do the Eldritch blasts, Eldritch invocations over time, um, and you automatically gain access to. I think once you reach the Fey ancestor, you get access to certain magics such as Misty Step and a few others. The ones that the uh, the your particular uh, path of the uh, Eldritch Knight do not provide. This this, this might help Moog on his path to revenge. Moog willing to sell out morals. Okay, so she will give you a mask. Uh, the implication that Moog had morals. So she will give you a mask, and uh, this mask is no longer like a she. Little her hand waves over. It doesn't do what the kids' masks do, which allows a, a once a day misty step and a, and a once a day uh, what's it called um uh, magic missile. No, this is now a once bond a day with being you. Shot through the face by Claudia. So <laughs> once at, on your next level up, you will you will multi class into warlock if your um. What's it called is not enough. Your charisma or whatever the modifier happens to be, you will be you will it'll bump you up to the uh, the, the minimum threshold of thirteen. If oh. you don't have a thirteen charisma, oh, I, I, I don't even have close to a thirteen charisma. Thirteen charisma it, will, will make Moog downright likable. It, w- it will bump you up to your to the minimum modifier. So it's like a temporary modifier because of this mask. It is in your possession, but it count it will take up one of your attunement slots. Yeah, maybe Moog will, Moog will take the mask. Maybe stuff stuff it into his backpack so uh, you know so it doesn't cause uncomfortable questions. Well, it's one of those like that's that's the deal if you're gonna walk out of here. Oh. Okay. Uh Mr Mr. the Sorcerer, would you also like to uh be- I was thinking about it. Um that's a nice natural um synergy with sorcerer. Oh sword locks are a uh, great blend. Yes they are. They yeah, are. they are. And it's just one level, right? Yes, yeah, one you minimum one level. You can you can on your next level up you can choose where you where you want to go after that. Because we do milestone yeah. leveling, okay? Uh, exact same deal. You're you already since you're a sorcerer, you're already a charisma based thing, so you don't you don't get a modifier right. to yours. That's but, unfortunate. But, uh, yeah. Sorry about that. But uh, no, it's all right. You know what? I'll even sweeten the deal. She puts her hands over the mask again. Each of you have a bonus once a day misty step. Just because Sweet. once a day bonus misty step just for being attuned to this mask, but you have to that, attune that to is it. Really handy for a one handed guy who can't climb. Right. <laughs> also handy for a guy whose hands are gen- generally occupied. All right. All right. So because the rest now, I assume you'll be able to talk the rest of your party into not attack. Now, if your party does decide the, the three that walked off, if they decide to attack us, um, it will not go well for them. Just Ooh, throwing it out there. And since and also, uh, you know, the 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 Anna's hag here, she's like, I'm the mayor of the town. So uh, everything you've reported back, it just comes to me anyway. So, I will put out a cease and desist. You know, you just tell the adventuring guild it's taken care of. You will tell that the that the the hag menace in the East Cherry is taken care of, and we will go about our business. And when the day comes that this operation no longer works, we'll become North Cherry or South Cherry. We got have time. One, have one request since you mayor. Yes. Maybe maybe declare a special day for great heroes who solved mystery. Uh, you know what. Come back next year, and you'll have a special. Day. You'll have a special day. We'll have a parade Mook, in your honor. Mooks old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you like to walk back to the town, or you would like to get the teleportation uh, circle back to the? Uh, you want to back, walk through the grove all the way back again and avoiding all the shambling stuff, or do you just want to take the teleportation circle back to the town into my uh, my manor and stay the night in the? Uh, you can stay the we night should, in my probably, mansion. We should probably go. We should probably go find friends, and make sure they're not doing anything stupid. All right. Uh, but she does reach out to shake your hand to buy, to make this a binding deal. <laughs> right, shake her with the, the hand that isn't yeah. there. Yeah, <laughs> Mook, 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 Mook sheds a tear as he like reaches out with his left hand. <laughs> well, she'll take your stump and it'll make it binding. She just needs contact. So, do you agree to these terms? Yes, he agrees to his terms. Uh, you feel, but but, 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 we, but we do get the gold, right? Oh yeah, you get all the gold. Okay. They have like basically bought your services. And Jorser, same thing. Uh, the, yeah, the, I agree. The nightmare hag reaches out to you and shakes your hand. So upon your next uh, upon your next level up, you all will become level one warlocks. You will add. You will multi class into warlock, um, fey, the fey based one. And because your friends oh. are not here, they they also hand you over a sack with two thousand six hundred gold, a plus one axe, one flying carpet that is the small kind, so it has a two hundred pound capacity. And a speed of 80 feet per round. If you exceed that, it will not fly. So basically, one one person, or and if you try to go two, they better be tiny. What kind of what kind of axe? Just a hand axe? Just a one hand, plus one hand axe, and a bag of holding, and an extra pants called the flash pants. Uh, Rick, are you writing all this down? I'm. Uh, oh, 
bag of holding and flash pants. And for the main purposes of this, you now have the money you need to book the passage to do your actual main quest. The whole point of going to this area was to get money to go on your quest, and now you have it. Well, some might say, Gibby, that the whole point of going to this area was also to, uh, you know, maybe rescue the the enslaved children. Well, I mean, you still have time for that. I think that's what our cutaway will be about. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, so while these folks are here, I'm going to go back to, we're going to put you guys, you guys are here, and let's put... uh, Let's go back to this map here, where er- you guys are back in the central area. Uh, Moog and S- Jorcer, you're down here. The second, you three are back into this location here. Uh, I'll even put you on this side so that your conversations are to yourselves. So, do you want to check on the kids? I feel like it's a trap. I think, I think we should just get. Uh, back to the adventuring guild. Get the heck we should out. say we will, and we should run this up because we are frankly well outside of our weight class right now with three hags. Most important thing is making sure that the people who can do something find out. Hmm. Oh, uh, also, Moog is almost certainly betraying us. They offered him in order. That does sort of sound like his style. Yeah, it's, uh, like the minute they offered that, he was sold. So just let's not trust Moog. <laughs> in general uh at all if possible and uh yeah and and yeah i think i think information dissemination is the best part of valor Hiller. yeah unfortunately we don't stand a chance against those but uh when i was well they're not hurting the kids at least so we can we can we can move on i uh, yes psychologically i understand i um, was uh, out. a street urchin once <laughs> and um of course uh oh look we've got company oh no they're... No, this kid. This kid wanders from the hall. Like, hey, dudes, what's going on, man? Oh, hanging out. How, cool. How are you? How do you do, fellow kids? How old are you? Uh, let's see, I turned fifteen in the spring. Yeah, dude. Uh, do your parents know you're here? Yeah. Well, who are your parents? Uh, the Tanners. Uh, uh Jill and uh, Susan Tanner. They. Well, uh, why did the town look so distraught? I thought uh, perhaps it was because all their children would be co-opted in some sort of violent. No, cult. okay. So some of the parents get a little uppity, so we just run into town. We put we play pranks on them from time to time. Not all the kids do it, you know. And it's kind of a game we kind of do, especially whatever like newcomers. Do they know it's town. a game, or do you think they're being no, terrorized by Well, it's a big show power. whenever people like you show up into town. You know, people. Why like, oh, is it I'm gonna, show I'm gonna, when I'm gonna we write, I'm gonna write the job. I'm gonna write the wrongs. I'm so justice. Look at my hat. People like yeah. you, you guys show up. Like we have to every town in the local the, charter the, the has. Child slavery, yes. If we're not, dude, I'm not a slave, dude. <laughs> no, you have free will with your 15 year old brain. <laughs> um, <laughs> old people, am I oh, right? I'm sorry, you're 108, and you're all you're about, you're, you're about to be dust. Uh, and all your opinions listen, seem to matter. fam. Let me uh, lay down the ribs. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> oh my skin! This wins. is so skibbity. <laughs> you're being skibbity enslaved. By very powerful <laughs> beings that you probably Dude, you can't see comprehend. Where we stay? It is hella dope. Oh, We've cool. Do you do you have here. like a, whatever the Fey equivalent of Nintendo is? Wonderful. Oh, I'm a thousand percent picturing the Foot Clan hideout from the 1990 Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> Gibby, you're trying really fucking hard here, man. But what do you want me to do? <laughs> this is. Oh, whatever you want to do. Do you want to go check on the kill? Uh, yeah, I don't, don't want. Children? I don't want the kids to be enslaved by really powerful beings. Okay. Another I mean, I'm glad to see you. Someone's got morals. I'm not trying to make Dude, you do anything. Dude, I was very stupid. upfront about what my character is. Another, I understand. Another option, Stan, is I could shoot this kid. Uh, well, let's not shoot the kid. This really would be in self-defense, seeing as he's just kind of standing Did, did you like... Wait a minute. Hey, lady, did you say you were going to shoot me? Uh, Your photo. How about that? High five. That's awesome. I like that. <laughs> Don't leave me hanging. Don't leave me hanging. Gotcha. Do you high five him? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna go back, hang on to my friends and like that. We gotta, we gotta straight. It's because the sun goes down. We gotta, we gotta be in bed in a couple hours. But yeah, man, you just come back, check out our, our area. It's awesome. He just goes right back out. And radical. <laughs> what? <laughs> if he's so radical, why did they shoot us and nearly kill Jorcer when we just yeah. walked into a glade? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Stan, you're square. <laughs> Uh, maybe I, uh, I'm old and out of touch, but I don't know if uh, sending mass children to shoot strangers is just a harmless prank. Well, given that it seems like it's been going on for generations, we're clearly dealing with long-term indoctrination. I don't even think anyone here realizes that it just things are amiss. Steve, 
I, I went to a Catholic school for a couple of years. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, so the kids who were um, shot by somebody and uh, turned into pul- pulverized were are they actually dead? Uh, oh yeah! Oh, the ones you killed? Like, yes. When, when <laughs> Somebody killed these, them. The new revelation that the children are here with their parents' permission. Uh, so I don't know why the the town with the free cocaine was was even sad. Why are we even here? Who even complained? Uh, give me. Give, I'm trying to think. Give Either me a, way, this feels like something that's out of our league. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you could try to give me like a, a combination of insight and history, if you'd like. Insane. Well, but, I know I know as much as is uh, well, as being think, revealed. Yeah. Well, the only person that's ever seemed to care was the sheriff. You know, everyone else seemed to be kind of cool with it. There were there were shops set up during the day and everything like that. So wait, is uh, it no, that's sheriff? not what you said, Gibby. You said everybody looked forlorn and uh, well, because the kids attack. Yeah. Or, what were, what were those? Or, but if, but if these... they were the kids, then they know what's going on. What were all or, those corpses decorating the the sign? Okay. Or these these hags are trying to like buy you off because they don't want you to call the bigger popo like exactly what Cabrera said. I know, yeah. but there's not really anything we can do here. I mean, not, we can't. Well, yeah, we, we can go to the Adventurers Guild and actually run this shit up the line. <laughs> okay, well, given that most of our party is on board with not, so I guess being caught in, do we split the party now? What do we do? That's you know what? That's an excellent question, and maybe we have to come back to that next time. We have reached that hour mark. <laughs> oh, the party divided. Will they With stand? moral ambiguity down the line, where would Is happen? It, does everybody have their next character in mind? <laughs> I do, and yeah. it's just to make Steve mad. <laughs> <laughs> it's a rogue who only casts spells. <laughs> 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 the world's greatest rook. Ah, <laughs> uh, well. Steve yeah, is if not going to find that was close, Richter. <laughs> if if you're going to die on a hill, I guess um, you know, yeah, anti-child not, not slavery. Supporting child yeah. enslavement is is one I'm willing to go down on. But Here's the thing: know. Would you guys like to go check on the children one more time? It might actually change. It might well not change, but it might reinforce some opinions. I'm sure they're having some great a <laughs> great time. Yeah, I'm sure they no, I, like I feel like, and, I feel like we've wanna, got the gist of things yeah. here. The skulls in the corner, right? You know? Oh, one more. How about I want to show you one more map? How about that? <laughs> Claudia wants to see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Gibby clearly worked hard on this map. We're gonna see it. <laughs> yeah, I want you all to see it. So just just for my notification, the other guys are unaware of this just yet. So, all right, you guys come into this area, which is set up with like all these bunks and the kids, and they clearly have like their little uh uh, uh the Neverland. Yeah, we're still on the old map, just FYI. Oh, I'm so sorry. I thought I pulled you guys up here. My mistake. My mistake. Okay, so the northeast. There you go. All right. You guys come up here, and like I said, it looks like you know there's a bunk for the kids, there's food, there's table. It's kind of like uh, Peter Pan and Neverland and all that crap. But at the top up here, behind this row of uh, uh, porcelices are these children without masks and a very hot uh, oven ready to go at a moment's notice. What? Oh. So they're yeah. well fed. Okay. They are well fed indeed. <laughs> well, I guess we'll um, uh, discover the the obvious and horrifying implications of this on the next episode. On the next episode, next episode of <laughs> Authors and Dragons. What the hell kind of steak was that? <laughs> well, oh! it's funny you should ask uh, because you had two options: go down south and talk to the people in the snoring, or go up north and talk and listen. You heard the kids, and you opted that, so we got to the negotiation table first. So. What a Not great place to leave off. And I noticed the kids have uh, an ample supply of cocaine, so at least they're being looked at. Well, here's the thing. You could've, if you had guys had not made it so much noise, you would have snuck in a little bit, but you made a lot of noise, so they knew you were coming. She had time to call her sisters. So, with that said, does anybody have anything they would like to say to the audience, our family, and our friends out there before we sign off for this episode? God damn it! Moog yeah. <laughs> <laughs> got paid. Um, if you well, see an ape that looks like the one from the D&D... Uh, Images run the fuck the other way. Guard your genitals. <laughs> Guard your genitals as you run. <laughs> All right, everybody. We've been the Dicey Bastards, and you've been great. On behalf of Steve Weather, Emily Captain, Rick Walteri, and Robert Bevan, I'm MK Gibson. See y'all later. Bye, everybody. 
Bye. Bye. Goodbye, friends. Dicey Bastards is brought to you by Authors and Dragons, the channel by geeks for geeks. If you'd like to support this show and the authors therein, please do donate to patreon.com forward slash authors and dragons. Not only will you get bonus content, but you can hang with a vibrant community of online weirdos. Theme music performed by the Gold Call 4. I'm going to rub some cocaine on a steak and uh, cook it up.